All right, we're going to go to 17.2, vertical analysis on a balance sheet. Reminder, 17.1 was vertical analysis of an income statement. Vertical analysis ratios, um, they measure the relationship between one financial statement item and another item on the same financial statement. On an income statement, each item is divided by the net sales. On a balance sheet, each item is divided by the amount of total assets. So yesterday we divided by the net sales and today total assets. Here is our um, balance sheet. Okay, those are all the asset amounts and they're divided by the total assets, which is right here. That's the 100% one. And then the liability and stockholders equity amount divided by the total assets. So still, total assets. Because remember, when we finish this sheet, the total assets should equal the total liabilities and stockholders' equity. A business determines its benchmark vertical analysis ratios for its balance sheet in the same way it determined its income statement ratios. It uses annual ratios from prior, prior fiscal periods, industry standards published by industry organizations, business plans, and unexpected events. Okay, to evaluate, if you look, um, sorry, rewind a little bit. A leading publication of industry standards presents vertical analysis ratios for only three asset items, net accounts receivable, merchandise inventory, and net plant assets. These items represent the majority of the total assets of the business. Therefore, 3Green closely monitors its vertical analysis ratios for these items. Um, and if you look here, I've highlighted these for a reason. Let me find it. There it is. Um, three greens ratio for accounts receivable, right there, um, has increased from 6.6 .6 to 7.5. This is a favorable trend. The current year ratio 7.5 is still below the target range. Um, the target range was like 9%, or between 8 and 10 is the target range. That ratio should cause management to reevaluate how the company approves credit card customers. Allowing more credit sales will likely increase both sales and uncollectible accounts. But if, the man but if managed carefully, sales should increase at a higher rate than uncollectible accounts. Um, and then we have merchandise inventory. Let's see. Um, they say between 42 and 45 percent, and we are in there. Um, it is a favorable trend because it went down towards the target. Um, prior the prior year ratio is higher than the target range. The de decline is favorable. The current year's ratio is 43.3, which is within the target range. And then we have total plant assets. The target here is between 20 and 25 percent. Um, so we are favorable trend. Um, it's within the target range, and this, this ratio is difficult for a business to change over a short period of time. Therefore, the target ratio should be considered when acquiring plant assets in the future. Buying used plant assets can help to reduce the ratio. A company below its target range might consider buying additional or higher quality plant assets. A ratio that measures the ability of a business to pay its long-term liabilities is called a solvency ratio. The vertical analysis ratio for total liabilities is one type of solvency ratio. Similar to other ratios used by investors, the ratio for total liabilities has another name. Total liabilities divided by total assets is called debt ratio. Although solvency ratios are generally considered long-term measures, the debt ratio can be used to, to rate the ability of a business to pay its current and long-term liabilities. So here we have um, correcting an unfavorable or evaluating an um, evaluating the liability. Um, if we look here, three green determines that total liability should be between 12 and 18 percent of total assets. Three green's debt ratio declined from 27 percent to 13.6 percent. This is a positive trend. The current debt ratio is within target range, so that's really good. Analyzing individual vertical analysis ratios provides more insight into the change of the debt ratio. 
And we're done. Why do many retailers perform vertical analysis on accounts receivable and merchandise inventory? Well, first, these are typically two of the largest asset accounts for a retail merchandising business. Secondly, uh, industry standards are available for these accounts. What may cause a vertical um, analysis ratio for accounts receivable to be below the target range? A ratio below the target range may indicate that a company is restricting customers' ability to purchase on account. This action may have a negative effect on sales. What may cause a vertical analysis ratio for merchandise inventory to be below the target range? <clears throat> the business may not be stocking an adequate supply or variety of merchandise. What should a company do if the vertical analysis ratio for merchandise inventory is above the target range? The company should prepare a list of the inventory items having the largest cost. The company should assess with whether the proper quantity of each item is available for sale. Future inventory purchases should ensure that the optimal quantity on hand is maintained. And why is it risky for a business to have too much liabilities? The business must be able to pay its liabilities on a timely basis. If sales decline during difficult financial times, a business may be unable to make its monthly payments.